YouTube, what's up? It's your boy Kuzi. Welcome back to the complete Phasmophobia equipment series. We are continuing this installment by covering the UV light. But before we get into it, I need to put a disclaimer on this episode and every future episode for this series, as well as uh, all the episodes we've done so far. I should have done this on the first episode, but I want to make this clear. At the time of recording this, they have been talking about doing an equipment change for the longest time where they update the equipment, they change it up, all that stuff. And I've had this guide prepared for three months now. Okay, I've been putting it off anticipating that update that has not come yet. So I am currently recording this on May 3rd of 2024. So at the time of recording this, they haven't released the update and we don't know when that's going to happen. So just know that if you're watching this, and it's sometime later, uh, there's probably a new guide out for you that I've done. So anyways, beside the point, as it stands right now, everything that I cover in this series is what I believe to be the best of the best, okay? So anyways, let's jump straight into it, talking about the UV light, baby. Alrighty, so we're on Tanglewood as per usual with the series, and what we're talking about is uh, the UV light. And if you'll notice, I'm not starting out with tier one because I hate to spoil this for you, but tier one's the best, but I'll explain that here in a little bit. Tier three is what we're starting out with, and then we'll do tier two, but let me just show you kind of what's going on with the UV light. So you can use it as a flashlight, but it's really, really dark. But um, it's it's the same as, as all the other pieces of equipment. You get it in your hand, you turn it on. It's just if you switch, you can't turn it on while it's in your pocket, but that's okay. Um, so yeah, with uh, the UV evidence, you basically, you can see it whenever the ghost touches a door, touches a light switch, or touches like uh, a locker. Uh, everything else, there's like a couple other places where it can leave fingerprints, but I'm not too well versed in that. I think it has something to do with like the keyboard at prison or something like that. But mainly what you got to look for is, is the handprint on the door, or if it turns a light switch on, you uh, can check the light switch for the, um, for the fingerprint. Um, like, or whenever it touches a window. Like I just heard, I think, or maybe that was, that was something being thrown in the basement, but nonetheless, um, yeah, so what we're gonna do now, this is a tier three. It is uh, on paper supposed to be the best of the best, but it is not um, simply because of just the fact that it's like a flashlight and it's not really that great of an area light, okay? And that's kind of the argument for what I'll get into whenever I cover the tier one, but I'm getting ahead of myself. So uh, this is a tier, the tier three. Um, it's not necessarily the worst. Uh, it's kind of tied with the tier two. Uh, cause you'll see here in just a moment when I do get the tier two, it's, it's pretty much the same thing. Okay. Alrighty. So we're on Tanglewood with the tier two now, baby. And, uh, I take back what I just said about the tier three being tied with the tier two. If we go back to the exact same location, look at, look at the, the difference. All right. I'll, I'll see if I can edit in like a side by side comparison of the tier two and the tier three. Um, but one thing that I didn't do when I was showcasing the tier three was I didn't make sure that we were getting all three evidences. I thought that the ghost touched like this window, but in reality it was um, down in the basement, but it made me think, what if it did touch the window? We were technically on nightmare mode just then and it was hiding UV evidence. But anyway, speaking of evidence, here is all the ghosts that require UV evidence, all right? If you're playing on amateur through professional, you're gonna get these uh, ghosts for sure if you have um, UV evidence. If you're on Nightmare or Insanity, higher difficulties, um, it's uh, it's a little bit different. So uh, the only ghost that interacts with the uh, UV evidence differently is the Obake, okay? The Obake can do two things with the evidence. It can either A, leave a six digit fingerprint, which will literally look like a handprint but it'll have like an extra finger, okay? Um, I cover that in my how to identify or rule out every single ghost in the game in under 60 seconds video. It'll be linked down in the description. And the other thing it'll do is it will cut the fingerprint duration in half, okay? I didn't really go into this too much uh, whenever, I, whenever I touched on it in the ghost guide, but here I'm gonna talk about it. So for instance, your fingerprint duration is how, if the ghost touches a door, on i think on these settings professional the handprint will stay there for 120 seconds if the obake interacts with it it will turn that 120 seconds duration into 60 so it'll cut it in half all right and that's whatever whatever that duration is for the respective settings just it's it's cut in half it's an, if it's an obake 
uh, and it uses its ability. But uh, other times you can um, you can get a handprint. You can set up some salt, and if the ghost has UV evidence, it can leave feet print, uh, feet prints. And then the other thing that I'll touch on is your UV stuff, like your flashlights, your, like your tier two and your tier three, um, as well as the tier one. But all of them have what's called a charge time, like a UV charge time. So that means it will, um, it's kind of like the duration at which it illuminates the handprint. So like you can hold it over the handprint and then just kind of drop your, your light and the handprint will be there even without the UV being directly on it, if that makes sense. It talks about it in the wiki. I'll link the wiki down below in case you want like more information on that. But yeah, man, that's the tier two. It's uh, it's pretty stinky. Uh, it's a very small light. Um, okay, so here we are. Tier one, baby. Cream of the crop. Best of the best of the UV lights, all right? The reason why is because it's it's a stinking glow stick. Look at how much it lights up this room compared to that little teeny tiny circle that we got with the tier two, and then a, a circle about twice that size with the tier three, okay? It lights up the whole freaking room, and the thing you gotta know though, the only reason why someone would argue that the tier two or tier three is better than the tier one is because after a certain amount of time, I can't remember it off the top of my head, the UV will basically go out, right? And so all you got to do is you just got to pick it up and you got to reshake it, okay? But see, this is the UV charge time that I was talking about. So we held the UV over it and as long as it's close to it, you can see the handprint. So this is not an Obake handprint like I was just talking about because it's a five digit uh, handprint. But this ghost definitely has UV, so I would I would check that. But we're not doing an actual contract here. I'm just talking about the, the equipment. Okay, so fortunately, uh, I edited that last part out, but I, um, I I had a brain fart. But during that brain fart, it allowed the UV to die out. So this is a perfect example. You just pick it up and you just reshake it like you're turning it on again. Um, but the other thing that I was going to talk about was um, the reason why this is so good, man. The reason why tier one is the best is because it's not electronic. Your tier two and your tier three are electronic, right? So you could literally, during a hunt, bro, turn off your flashlight and still have a light and the ghost would have no idea where you are because it doesn't detect the glow stick because it's not electronic, right? So you could literally be hiding in a corner from a revenant. It'll be like w looking for you at a, at a snail's pace, right? And it's never, if, if the revenant comes to like right there, if you had your flashlight on or the tier two or tier three UV on, uh, it would come straight to you and kill you. But dude, with this baby you are safe all right so that's why it's it's the best because it's not electronic it's not registered as an electronic and it's just it's i don't know there's just a couple different factors that set it apart from every other from the tier two and the tier three so that's why a lot of people say that it's op that's why things like the uh tier one thermometer are better than the tier two and tier three and same reason with that i think the big basis is that it's not electronic so you can safely use it during a hunt um so anyways yeah so unlike all the majority of the other pieces of equipment um that was a very loud ghost uh air ball but it's not an oni it can't be an oni anyways but that's beside the point um unlike every other piece of equipment where it's better to have the tier three or the tier two or whatever um, you don't necessarily have to level up for this because it's a starter item, so you're good. But I hope that this episode helped you. Uh, do me a favor and click right here on this playlist uh, to go watch the next episode. And uh, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.